Okay, let go. For over 40 years, this sturdy little vessel has been putting to sea on a variety of important missions. But this voyage is especially significant, for it is among the last she will carry out in her current role as an oceanographic research vessel. It's a role she has performed since 1973. Her early career, however, was not nearly so peaceful. Brightly was built in the early years of World War II. She first saw service in the fierce naval battles of the North Atlantic, helping to salvage damaged Allied ships. In 1944, Sprightly was transferred to the Royal Australian Navy. She continued her salvage work in Australian waters, rescuing a number of ships such as the SS Ormiston. The Ormiston was torpedoed by a Japanese submarine off Coffs Harbour. It seems unlikely she could have made it to Sydney without Sprightly's assistance. In a less obvious way, Sprightly's work as a research vessel has also contributed to the safety of ships and lives at sea. This voyage is one of a series which aims to provide a greater scientific understanding of the waters between Tasmania and the Australian mainland. Bass Strait is one of the most hazardous and least understood bodies of water in the world. Hundreds of ships have foundered in its unpredictable waters since Matthew Flinders first discovered the strait in 1798. Today, it's one of Australia's busiest commercial shipping routes. It's also used by thousands of fishing and recreation vessels each year. What's more, Bass Strait is the site of one of the nation's biggest offshore oil and gas reserves. Compared to the surrounding seas, Bass Strait is very shallow. Its average depth is only about 60 metres. But as this computer model shows, the ocean floor beyond the strait drops abruptly to about 4,000 metres. The strait bears the full force of the gales that roar in from the southwest after traversing thousands of kilometres of open ocean. Recent research suggests that water movement in the strait may influence currents, tides and weather right up the east coast. This voyage of the Sprightly is one of a series which has brought together marine scientists from many institutions and disciplines in one of the most ambitious undertakings of its kind. The research leader for the voyage is Dr. John Church from CSIRO's Division of Oceanography in Hobart. The path to scientific enlightenment is seldom direct, and on this occasion, Sprightly was obliged to zigzag all over the strait in order to collect the full range of scientific data. Of great interest is the pattern of currents in Bass Strait, currents that, until recently, have been little understood. These scientists are laying sensitive meters which will record the movement of water at various depths over a period of several months. The information is recorded on miniature magnetic tapes, which will be retrieved on the next voyage.
Such information has helped researchers from the Victorian Institute of Marine Sciences to generate computer models of current movements. This one shows the characteristic direction and strength of water through the strait over a 24-hour period. And this model simulates the comparatively large rise and fall of the tide in Bass Strait. An understanding of these tides and currents is important to mariners and could be vital to rescue services in the event of disasters at sea. Over the years, Spritely has been extensively modified to equip it for a wide range of oceanographic research activities. On this voyage, water samples are being collected from various depths at a number of carefully determined locations. The small onboard laboratory enables scientists to perform a range of experiments. In this case, they are measuring the salinity, dissolved oxygen, and nutrient concentration in the samples. And this equipment is being used by researchers John Keane and Wilma Blom of Sydney University to take samples of sediment from the seabed. Okay, lower away. They've also developed a coring tool, which will enable them to collect minute fossil remains layered in the seabed. By looking at the cores, we'll be able to work out when the strait, uh, Bass Strait as we know it today, was flooded by the rising ocean. Uh, initially, the ocean flooded in from the west as sea level rose, as the ice melted and uh, then it broke the final land bridge uh, between Wilson's Promontory and Tasmania uh, at a date which we don't know at the moment, but we hope to find out by studying these cores. That'll do for the first stop there, Eve. Uh, bottle number one. Spritely is also equipped for computer analysis of collected data, important since the vessel is often at sea for several weeks at a time. With 11 permanent crew and up to eight scientists on board, an efficient galley is essential. At meal times, it's first come, first served, and everyone gets equal treatment. While the vessel's at sea, the work must go on around the clock. With scientists from so many disciplines on board, the facilities must remain flexible and schedules must be tightly organised. But despite her invaluable service to Australian science, Spritely's resources are no longer adequate to meet the ever-expanding need for knowledge about our oceans. During 1985, she is being replaced by a new oceanographic research vessel named the Franklin. The 55-metre ship will be operated by CSIRO, but will be a national facility serving marine scientists throughout Australia. While the new vessel is undergoing her final fitting out, the Spritely will be completing the last of her voyages for CSIRO. Captain George Cavill has been with Spritely since she began her career as a research vessel. A long association, which is now coming to an end. Oh, one can get a bit uh, sentimental or whatever about it, but uh, I find no room in life for regrets for the past because it's gone, it's finished, we have to go with whatever comes up.
ship is basically one's home for six months of the year and over a period of 12 or 14 years one gets that same feeling that perhaps people do who live in the same street or the same house or the same length of time. I have no ambition whatsoever to go on cargo vessels or passenger vessels. Research work I, I, I like, it's interesting and it's, uh, it has variety in it. And variety I find the thing which I enjoy more than anything. To get on a regular run would be uh, rather poison to me. Since she was first converted for scientific use, Spritely has covered over a half a million nautical miles in waters from the Antarctic Circle to the equator. She's done everything from studying rock lobsters up the West Australian coast to recovering rockets fired to observe solar eclipses. In her scientific career, Sprightly has played a major role in helping shape the next generation of marine science in Australia.